one nation. And it's just about the hip hop nation, all the real niggas that I recognize in the game. Hey, why you scared? Why you scared? We got it. Who are we talking to? Who are we talking to? Internet's. Internet's right now sitting down in the Combat Jack show. We have Drew Ha, co founder, Duck Down Records. Mm. And, I, and I'm realizing that, you know, what went on with Pac, particularly when he got attacked and shot in, in Midtown, like, like some shit is coming out. Like he was really justified, man. And, what do you mean? Like him? Like, in terms of some of the names that he mentioned, in terms of like how he felt, like cats had set him up. I, I, I can't say that I would be shocked by it because, like I said, he wasn't the type of dude that would ever hold his tongue. And I, right. I could see some people being sensitive to that. We, we'd be in his trailer, like he was shooting the movie with, with Gridlock at the time, and me and Tech. And, and it, yo, he was one of the hardest working people I've ever seen. So that's another thing just for people to know. Like he would work all night on his movie, or not even, I'm sorry, all day on the movie. He would come home, we were staying at his house. He would come pick us up. We would go to the studio from like nine at night to three in the morning, and then he'd be back for his set time, which was like five in the morning. And the rest of us, we'd be sleeping and showing his house all day. Burnt out by day. Right. A couple of times, he brought us. He brought me and T. He was like, "Yo, if any of you guys want to wake up and come to the set, you can." And me and Tech took him up on that, and we had a lot of time with him on, in his trailer. And it just his intensity, like I said, it was certain things that he spoke upon that. He just didn't care. Like mm. he had his way, and and I could see some people being sensitive to that, or or feeling a certain way about it. I mean, that's just natural. Like if a person's like, man, fuck that dude, or fuck that, you know, they have that he, energy he spoke, all the time. He spoke on it. Mm. Yeah, he spoke on it. Like whereas we might be like, eh, that guy disses me, but whatever. Like right. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna be cool about it. Pac was like, man, fuck that. He dissed me. You either ride with you. Either he always had that attitude. You're either with me or you're against me. So, There's no middle. So, so how but, did but, that? But was he always? Was he ultra sensitive? Like was he always taking a? Uh, uh, some shit as a diss to him like I mean to me it sounds like he's constantly riled up against somebody I I, I didn't know him well enough to, to answer that correctly but I, I would say yeah like you know just observing I would say probably there's probably t you know I remember him saying something about about Mob Deep and we were like yo we just made records with these guys Buck is incredibly tight with um, Havoc and Prodigy mm. these guys are on our sessions and I was you know trying to like even explain that to him and he wasn't trying to hear it like he just didn't matter you know so at that did did y'all argue about that? Or he was like, nah, but fuck them. I mean, like, look, I'm cool with me, you. This, right. this, this is still me to Tupac. This is in Buck to Tupac. So I'm still going to be cautiously, you know, I'm not going to say, like, you know, intimidated by his his energy and what the fuck he is. Right. You know, so I, it wasn't so much an argument, but I did try to make that that case. I remember certain times of saying, like, yo, we're cool with certain people over right. here. Let us try to approach that or, you know, and see where it goes. Now, it was a wild time, man, because, I mean, it, it was very polarizing in hip hop. Um, whatever it was got marketed as the, you know, East versus West Coast beef. And here you guys are, man, like like the epitome of like a Brooklyn label, man. Like, how was it, man, being in the middle of that, man? You, you understand? How was it, man? Yeah, it was. it was definitely... To, it definitely was weird to be in the middle of that and like I said because we were cool with so many people on this side that got mixed up in it then we come back but doing the One Nation album it wasn't just all West Coast people that, right. that was the whole intention of what Pac was doing with One Nation was like I'm gonna sh just what it says One Nation like we're all over the place he did have a beef with certain artists on this side that happened to be in New York um, happened to be in Brooklyn happened to be in Brooklyn but not every artist and not it wasn't like he was like fuck that whole coast right. and Pac was from New York right, right like right. Pac is from MC New York so I mean some of it is also like media runs with of it of course and I you know it, it, like I said there was more it, to me it was more direct I remember seeing Havoc when I got back to New York and he was like he had got the news or whatever and I remember him even saying it to me one night I saw him at a at a club or a bar or something and he was like yo, you know and I I kind of had to even explain it to him real quick of just like yo it was well, it, it it's cool like it's not how you think it is right. or um not I don't it just because each person had their own relationship with him it's hard to speak on it for everybody of course is is there something I guess validating to to look back and say all right I mean our relationship with Pac was what it was your relationship with with Biggie was what it was and to see kind of like you know well I mean what is it about rap anyway that has all of this animosity with with artists towards one another I mean did did Picasso young hate males Matisse? man come on man young males with pride and ego and that doesn't you know 
Like, we're much older today looking back on it. We're talking about something that happened 17, 18 years ago, and we can do it with a level head. But you talk to 23, 24, 25 year today. olds today, they're going to come with that same aggression, you know, tenacity, and that's it. Yeah, like, and it's claiming your spot, and it's about respect, and, you know, oh, it's almost as. And it's real sensitive, too, man. Because hey, you'd be yo, like, you yo, he, 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 said, he like, said what in this record? Ooh, was he yeah. talking about me? Yeah. But, but, but that's what I mean. I mean, it's not someone stepped on your sneaker. It's somebody said this innocuous line that may or most likely may not even be about you, but just something just general to to get people riled up. Why do people, why are our rap artists as sensitive as they are? Weed smokers. Paranoid. <laughs> <laughs> and that, as I said, man, it's hard for me to speak on behalf of each individual. It right. really is. Like, but that's my that's how I can view it. Of just saying, young males and and egos, and that's what it is. Being on top. Now, what's unique also about you guys as a Brooklyn unit is you know here you guys are, and you guys are cool with Pac, but there's also some beef or some type of discord going on with with Biggie's camp. What was what was that, man? That was that was like one of the biggest regrets. You know that that probably I personally had in my career of like being in in a position to make decisions and allowing certain things. Not, but it, but even again going back to how young I was, I right. prob- and like I could see myself today thinking about it like, yo, I would I would change that. But back then, if only I could go back, or, or in a sense, right? Right. But back then, I wasn't really even in that confidence of a position of to course. say that I can overrule something or, or, or rule on it. And it, it was petty. Um, there there was some legitimate. Issues going on between some of some of the dudes in boot camp and Big, you know, like I'm not. There was a there was Big, st- Big or Bad Boy, Big, okay, you know, direct, right? Something over a lyric or a chorus or something like that. What we were just talking about, legitimate. Right. Like I'm not going to say it didn't exist. Like it wasn't, it wasn't made up. You know, they they they, they felt like there was something that was there. Who f- who fired the first shot? Um, I would you know I would say that we probably. F- Fired the first shot in terms of what they thought was retaliation for what they felt was already the one that you saw. It was like in, in the NFL. It's like, you know how sometimes the guy the, that gets the, the penalty. Second, the second penalty is the, the one that's The second dude seen. is the one who gets the flag thrown on. So yes, I felt yes. like we were the second dudes because uh-huh. we were retaliating for something that we thought was done. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know, but like I said, sitting, not, sitting here today looking back on it's it. It's so crazy. Crazy. You guys are petty. making money. You guys have had the opportunity that millions of people, not just in the U.S., but millions of people around the planet wish they had the opportunity to be in New York, be in Brooklyn, recording, making these videos, making money, having fun, really living out your dreams. Right. It's crazy. Right. And forget me, like later for me, because I'm, I'm doing this as a, a I'm, I can narrate this as a close bystander, but you got dudes that grew up with him, you right. know, within, grew up with him, were friends with him, were friends with his friends. Right. So that even made it a little more, you know. A, Tight, harder to. Right. Co- I mean, we, we're talking about Franklin Avenue, Fulton Street. We're talking about people that are cousins or friends even closer or brothers. Than Frank, of, even closer than Franklin, you know, like from like Tech of Smith & Wesson and just dudes that were around, you know, dudes from Junior Mafia and, mm-hmm. and cool and interacting. And we were doing business with Puff. You know, like we had just did the um, the uh, the Mary remix. Mary Smith remix. Western right. just did the Mary oh. remix with Puff. So you know, like I said, man, looking back on that, um, it was unfortunate, and as soon and it just so happened to all take place around the same time of before a lot of it came to the light. You talking about uh, Big passing and Pac passing and certain records coming out and us being in the whirlwind of all of this and then having to just completely fall back out of respect. And at least, uh, looking back on it, at least I can say we all, as a unit, we all made the right call by completely respecting what, you know, what had happened and never speaking on it again at the moment. Right. We didn't try to, like, publicize it or we didn't try to capitalize, capitalize on, on it. Capitalize on it, right. You know, at the time, it was like, yo, we fell back and it was what it was. And it's kind of even uncomfortable today to speak upon it because, um... You know, I know how personal it was to certain certain dudes, right. and for me to to like try to make it into an issue or a story, I feel like I'm, you know, I feel like I'm trying to you're exploiting, draw the you're yeah, exploiting, ex- exploiting it, uh-huh. and, and and it it just it just kind of went away, and like a lot of things happened, um, and we're cool with these dudes today, like C's and and certain people, like we definitely have squashed whatever was in the air, and we've had conversations about it internally, never publicly, but internally. 
Um, that's so, commendable, man. That's, yeah. that's definitely commendable, man. Certain people might feel other ways, right. like I said. But at least your conscience is clean, and 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 you've moved forward like a like a like a boss, basically. That's all you can do. 